Okay. So, good morning, uh, all of you. Um, welcome all uh, to the session. Today, this is about Arvashay Haropian, past, present, and future. Um, the Sunil Govindan, um, and I have along with me Salat, uh, who will be joining today's session. So, we'll be taking you through a quick walkthrough about Arvashay Haropian, what is quite new about um, the young, and how the community is doing, and where we are heading, and how we are actually. Uh, planning to work with uh, today's problem and uh, take me into a shape. Cool. Could you please go on the slide? Yes. Yeah. So, Sirat, how are you? Yeah. So, uh, hi. My name is Sirat Nimat. I'm a software engineer working for CloudEra since late uh, 2017. Uh, I'm mainly a backend engineer. I mostly worked uh, with backend technologies throughout my career, mostly with Java and some Python. Uh, yeah, uh, for Yarn, uh, I've been involved in the resource type feature and uh, lots of fast scheduler improvements and GPU uh, feature related improvements as well. And uh, I became a committer uh, last summer. So that's basically it for me. Oh, thanks, Silat. Yeah, so I'm Sunin. I'm work at Cloudera as an engineering manager. I will, I'm looking after Yarn and uh, other related compute aspects of the companies. And um, I'm a Apache Hadoop uh, PMC member and committer, and also I'm contributing to a couple of other Apache projects like Submarine and also an incubating project called Unicorn Scheduler. I'm pretty much focusing on the resource scheduling uh, in general, um, so various features in the capacity schedule and uh, other part of Yarn. I was looking into the past many years. You can get me at, uh, at Sunil Govind at Twitter uh, or at my LinkedIn. So uh, thanks all of you again for joining. Um, so let's look at the agenda for today. So what we are trying to cover today is like a basic introduction to Yarn. Um, just a quick summary. Many of you guys may aware about or may know about Yarn, but I would like to give a small a couple of slides on that Yarn. And also I would like to introduce to uh, what we have done in the past and how our release lines are looking, and also uh, a quick about quick overview about how the community is doing. Uh, and from there, we will take you through the current state of the union of the Yarn um, by looking into the various uh, new releases and the features. And uh, towards the end, we want to touch upon uh, how the roadmap and the future uh, lies ahead of us. So that's pretty much what we want to cover today. Um, so, Sirat, let's go. Next okay. Slide. So, cool. So, the overview part of the uh, Hadoop uh, Yarn. So, Let's look into uh, in general to the in their computer ecosystem. Um, so today, uh, as you see, the most of the data are actually in the HDFS, right, in the data centers, and also we have many of the data actually in the private, private public cloud storage as well, such as S3 or ABFS or in any other cloud uh, solution. So the the data is pretty much there, uh, and it may request need to be uh, pulled down or pushed up. Uh, it's basically demanding on how your use cases are going to look like. Now, if you look at the compute side of the world, right? You have Hadoop Yarn, which actually can run in uh, on-prem and in the data centers, and it can also run in on cloud. Like for example, you get an EC2, and you will be able to spin up your Yarn cluster there, and then tap that with any of the public cloud uh, storages or even your HDFS in if it is non-prem. So this is how uh, the compute and the storage we are just trying to position. And let's look at uh, some of the historical apps which is running, right? For example, you run uh, MR uh, or Spark uh, batch workloads, so or high on TAE, so high on MR. This kind of batch workloads can natively run on Yarn, uh, with it, that is actually its core strength, and uh, most of the deployments are of that sort. But as we see in the recent past, also, right? Uh, most of these workloads, as they run, it is very difficult to solve the noisy neighbor problem or to get better resource isolation or to get much more. Um, uh, SLAs and all the stuff like that. So that is where a uh, Docker kind of deployment always helps to have the better um, uh, isolation and uh, all the related advantages of the Docker, right? So Docker is now supported in Yarn pretty much in the past many years. It over the time it's got stabilized and more and more features we are adding and you'll be uh, looking into seeing some of them in the later time. Now on top of Docker, like yeah, we definitely can run this kind of long running services, uh, bit of it like for example, high on LLAP or Spark long run 
running session, they can actually now effectively run on top of Docker as an AT service, uh, which is basically on uh, one of the uh, you know, one of the offering. And um, so if we look at some of the, if we connect that these uh, de um, batch workloads and services right over to the deep learning apps as you come in, you'll be able to run some ML related workloads on top on top of the same Yarn cluster, where actually um, you will be doing your ETL jobs and doing the data engineering, and then finally push that data to your um, uh, ML models to run. So these capabilities are pretty much fit, fit into Yarn, and it can effectively run those. And uh, su support of Docker and the new other con con run times also help a lot into that matter. So uh, this is where I want to position the entire computer ecosystem as of today, what we see. And uh, we'll be seeing some more improvements in the upcoming uh, sessions. So let's uh, look at to the next slide where we will slightly talk about Yarn, right? So this pretty much you guys all know, um, uh, most of them. So it's Yarn stands for yet another resource negotiator, right? Uh, right from the date started. And ideally, Yarn is nothing but a distributed computing computer ecosystem where you have a master and you have a bunch of slaves. And each of the slaves we call as node manager, they'll be running you know, each of the node. So that how the resource management is very effectively happening with a one master core resource manager and the n number of slaves called node manager. So what we have done fundamentally coming from MR world, right, is that in Yarn we very much split the responsibility of resource management to the application management. So hence the term called application master or the daemon called application master act is coming into picture, which actually controls the entire life cycle of application. For example, if you have a, to run a MapReduce job, if you want to run a Spark job, there will be a specific application master for those jobs. And that will be demanding, and that will be demanding resources to resource manager and get the resources as needed. And it fulfills the entire workflow of how the job needs to be completed. So resource manager or non-manager just acts uh, actually as a sub of a help in terms of uh, controlling these resources in whichever way uh, it needed to be. So that's high level summary of Yarn. And if you look into the next slide where we just want to touch up some architecture, how it works, right? So we have around five to six host, and we are going around always in HA as a master and standby node. Then you will be getting per node slave node managers, which is actually in each of the other hosts, like host three, host four, host six. And each of them will be periodically hard beating to the masters just to tell that, okay, the particular slaves are alive and also to uh, give a consistent feedback. So if you uh, go further, uh, Silad, I think you can show how the one application is getting submitted. So this is client one. Uh, an application is getting submitted, and uh, the container a application master container is getting spawned, and uh, the application master container theoretically asks the resources and uh, other task containers comes in. That's basically that one colored uh, set of container. When I say container, it's basically the the task containers running on that host. So the client two, which comes in later, submits again an app. Uh, it goes to the same cycle. First of all, resource manager will find a node where it can fit the application master container and then application master container uh, demands more resources and gets your remaining task container. So that's pretty much a, a small visualization of how uh, a theoretical uh, deployment model look like in a yarn place cluster. So I hope you might have got some summary, but uh, just to recap, uh, the application masters are actually the um, so demons which actually controls in their life cycle of an application and which works in tandem with resource manager to get the resources. So. Uh, you can see host three, four, five, six, actually the host where most of the compute is pretty much happening. Okay, so over to next slide. Let's look at a uh, bit on the past, how the our release line is looking and towards the community side. So um, we have majorly three uh, three um, uh, lines of uh, release lines. I say 2.10x release, that is the stable 2.x branch. So we have given one of the recent uh, release of 2.10.1 uh, in the month of September. Uh, so it has a, it has offers a lot of great features, uh, including uh, uh, a lot of stability improvements happened in the 2.10 line. Uh, so that's something like you can definitely look for if you're in 2.x branch, but we definitely urge you to uh, upgrade to 3.x. That's where a lot of latest and greatest features from Hadoop is available. Now, looking to one of the stable branch, we say it as, uh, it's now the recent one that line is 3.1.4. It happened uh, a couple of months back. Uh, that's 3.1.4, and in that release, like we stabilized the 3.1.x uh, to a great extent, and uh, uh, that particular release is now used in widely in a lot of uh, uh, customers' uh, deployments. And there is also 3.2 branch actively happening, and uh, another release is pretty much in the pipeline to get into 3.2.2. So um, that then these are two branches we call as stable and. 
Uh, the, the latest and best from us is actually in the 3.3.0, which just happened a couple of months back. So that is a big major release for the Hadoop and their ecosystem and a lot of great features actually came out there. For example, now the Hadoop has a capability to support ARM-based architecture and a bunch of runtime upwards we are done. Like for example, you can now use Java 11 and uh, related to the cloud related use cases, uh, S3A and ABFS enhancements and uh, the yarn said a lot of scheduling improvements and application catalog for the native service so like that uh, there is an enormous amount of features we actually have done in 3.x uh, and got released as 3.3.0 so uh, we will quickly go through most of those uh, features and actually explain you what the feature is for and which kind of use cases it is serving and how you could benefit out of that so over to next slide uh, this is where i want to touch up pretty much about our community right so Apache Hadoop code base and their code base actually is uh, changing way faster and over time and a lot of unique contributors are actually coming in and actually contributing and uh, uh, improving our ecosystem and uh, like when, uh, 20, 2006 you started the, a small set of contributors and over the time it's just growing right and even now it's just like we at the peak of close to 80 plus contributors actively contributing and update committing the changes to Hadoop. So uh, the team which is called Hadoop is dead or all this kind of talks happening. Uh, the real communities uh, graph is actually looking pretty strong in terms of the unique number of commits goes in, the diversified uh, developer portfolio, it's all great. And if you look at the number of um, you know, the uh, the commits actually right our code change is happening in the code base that was other one was actually the unique authors and this about the commits you can see that it's still stabilized from 2016 and going that flat model where a lot of uh, uh, commits and code code changes are happening if you look at the next slides is where we wanted to talk more about actually the number of jiras are actually happening in the comments like how how diverse it is so um we have a lot of sub projects in hadoop right hadoop common yarn hdfs HDDS that is also on and also uh, MapReduce, right? Uh, like I so these are the different sub projects under uh, the Hadoop umbrella. And if you see the overall number of JIRAs, it's it's always in the range of 250 plus in a month. And uh, within that, we just try to give you some kind of a color coding to see that which project is actually pretty active, right? And Yarn, uh, earlier it is all about Hadoop common and then coming to MapReduce and HDFS is consistent throughout. And Yarn in between came up and going up and now Ozone is over there. So that's how the entire mix up of our um, sub projects uh, our contribution to the top number of JIRAs happening in the community. And I could say that it's, it's, it's pretty healthy and going way good. So congratulations and thanks for the support from all uh, the contributors across the world, which are, who are actually helping uh, the community to grow to the way it is today and even more powerful to the future. Cool. So let's look at our, how our community itself, right? The, the people behind the scenes who is helping a lot of contributors to get the board in and working. Right? We are close to 107, uh, 17 PMC members, and out of that, close to 13 plus members have got added last year. And we are close to 27 committers across the globe, and uh, 24 of them actually got added last year. So a very healthy number of uh, committers and PMC members are actually um, are looking after this code base. And uh, thanks to one of all of you to make this code base the latest today and uh, going further, uh, some great work is coming. So from here, I just wanted to summarize that how our com uh, uh, as a community level and how, so, uh, how our release lines are doing. Now, Silad will help us to take us from here to uh, explain about the state of the union of the yarn and how our features in detail. So, over to Silad. Okay, thank you, Sunil. So, as Sunil said, uh, what is the state of the union right now? As Sunil said, uh, Hadoop 3.3.0 it just released in this summer. So, it's it's pretty recent and, and contains many uh, new features and improvements. So, if we if we talk about the look about the bird's eye view about it, uh, we can divide it to main categories like uh, platform layer improvements and uh, workloads. So among the platform layer uh, improvements, we have log aggregation changes to support uh, cloud storage. And we also have container data directories uh, storage for S3 and uh, Azure file systems. Uh, yeah, all again, it's better cloud support. Uh, and we have uh, latest runtime supports for Java 11, and an armor architecture support as well. And also uh, powerful scheduling capabilities come into the picture if we talk about the platform. So about the workloads, uh, containerization support is 
more and more improved. Uh, we are going to, uh, in the direction of Docker and RunC. Uh, I will provide more details on that later. And just mentioning the uh, scalability a bit. So uh, we have a roadmap to 1K nodes uh, scale. Currently, we have 40K nodes with federated uh, young clusters. Uh, what is federation? Basically, uh, dividing the uh, big young cluster into several uh, smaller subclusters, but the applications uh, don't see that the these clusters are divided, so they are seeing the young cluster as a whole big cluster. Okay, so let's change the slide. Okay. So what are the features of Hadoop 3.3.0? Uh, so we have improved S3A delegation token support and S3Guard uh, performance. Uh, S3Guard uh, is a feature for the S3 object store, which can use the database as a store of metadata about objects in the S3 bucket. So that's basically it. And we also have uh, ABFS enhancements and improved troubleshooting. ABFS is the Azure Blob File System. Uh, one important thing is that the container storage interface support so we can attach external storage volumes to Docker containers with this uh, unified interface. Uh, it, uh, this is very important in cloud deployments again. Okay, and about the runtime improvements, we support Java 11 and ARM. I don't want to spend more time on this because we are in a little bit rush. Uh, okay, let's see the scheduling improvements. We call it global scheduling. The, this can also be divided into two sections. So what is what is the traditional traditional scheduling? So when a node, node heartbeat arrives to the resource manager from the node manager, it on schedules uh, and allocates containers per node. But it it has some limitations on performance. So the idea is is that we have this node state in the scheduler, and when one application uh, submits their but its uh, resource demands. Uh, we can sort these nodes uh, based on the resource demands of the applications. So basically we can sort about uh, resource usage, number of containers on the nodes or any specified policy for better affinity. The affinity means uh, to collocate the allocations of a job on the same rack or, uh, or just spread over the cluster if uh, there is a scenario for that. Uh, it can reduce network costs and, uh, and other factors. So yeah, uh, so if you just uh, want to summarize multi node look lookup, uh, it's basically we are looking at several nodes at a time uh, and we have fine grained logs instead of uh, uh, coarse grained locking and it, it improved the performance a lot. So we measured uh, uh, 10 times throughput and uh, 5K containers per second allocations. And the other part for the global scheduling is parallel allocation threads. So it's um, yeah, actually multi-threaded allocation instead of uh, single threaded. And you can see on the images that uh, we almost reached 5K nodes uh, per second. Okay, so let's go to the capacity scheduler improvements. Uh, we have a new placement engine. Uh, almost completely developed. So what was the motivation here? A Q mapping in capacity scheduler was very hard to maintain in terms of the code base and the code uh, quality. Uh, there was also some gaps between uh, capacity and fair scheduler. So uh, we wanted to have a more consistent uh, way of defining the placements. Uh, the placements are responsible for placing applications to queues based on username or user groups, primary or secondary, or application name or other variables. Uh, with this uh, more flexible system that we developed, uh, I mean the community developed, uh, we can achieve uh, uh, more flexibility in terms of adding more vari variables to the system or define the rejection rules for applications uh, in a more fine-grained fashion. Uh, another improvement in this category is a uh, new config format for mapping rules. So we uh, see that the format can be very convoluted and error prone to config uh, if they want to uh, describe a complex usage scenario. So that's why we thought that it, uh, we need a more, a more structured and more explicit straightforward manner to actually describe these placement rules. 
so you can look this uh, Jira app and there is there are two uh, design documents up there, which is very thorough. So I, I would just recommend it. Okay, uh, we have the FS to CS migration. So uh, there was a user demand uh, for migrating from fast scheduler to capacity scheduler. So uh, the community developed a tool uh which is capable of uh, parsing the fair scheduler config and emitting a capacity scheduler config uh, and also validating it so uh, that's very important to validate because we don't want the system to just emit the config which is not startable by an okay and another important thing here is that we will have an fs to cs talk on thursday uh at this given time so if if you are interested and you want to see a demo about this tool then please attend Okay, we also have some usability improvements uh, in terms of log aggregation and uh, yarn log servlets. So uh, what is log aggregation? This is basically a mechanism to collect logs from containers to a centralized location. Uh, traditionally, it was HDFS, but that was the, uh, as, as we pushed yarn towards the uh, cloud infrastructures, we realized that uh, we, we need uh, S3 and Azure file systems as well to store the logs mm, because not, not all deployments will have HDFS at hand. Uh, and we also have this uh, new log aggregate log aggregation file format, which is uh, putting an index above the traditional T file. So it, uh, it provides fast access to logs and the metadata to the log. So it's, it increases the performance. Okay, so let's check what's new for the workloads. So uh, we have this pluggable unified device framework, which is responsible for, uh, uh, which is the base for the GPU and the NEC V plugin right now, but it, it, it provides a way for developers to easily uh, develop plugins. So they are they shouldn't aware of any uh, your implementation details. So it's the plugin. This is the plugin way of doing things, and, and you don't need to be involved in Yarn so much. Uh, some technical details: the vendor plugin is a separate project, and we'll expose a jar file for the node manager, and the node manager will load this jar file, so it should be on the class pass. Uh, but if you are more interested, just check the design document. Okay, uh, we have the FPGA support as well. So as you can see, it's divided to two umbrella gyras. The first one was adding uh, the first phase of FPGA support, let's say that. And the second second one was stabilization and more improvements and more production ready uh, developments. Okay, and we have better GPU support as well. What, what does that mean, better GPU support? Uh, basically, the gist of it is that we take the GPU topology into consideration when scheduling. Uh, so there is a tool called NVIDIA SMI, uh, which can fetch topology information from the system. And why is that important? So the topology describes how one or more GPUs in the system are connected to each other. So there can be scenarios or use cases that, that this topology is important because the data is copied between the GPUs. And yeah, if they are, on the same bus or closer to each other or in any other sense, then it could be more effective to use those GPUs together. And uh, you can check the gyra as well, but I, I inserted a screenshot here. So uh, these are machine learning models and the uh, percentages are uh, performance gains through this computational floating from CPUs to GPUs. Okay, let's check what is the what are the container enhancements? So as Jan supports Docker uh, for a long time ago, uh, there was a demand from users to debug various Docker applications. Uh, and that, this was a very requested feature. So interactive Docker shell support uh, is, is providing a means to, to like, like Docker execute. With Docker execute, you can log into a container and execute arbitrary commands. So you can troubleshoot what went wrong. You can check the configuration and check the Docker's file system or mounts or anything. 
Okay, and we have also various stabilization and usability improvements uh, like debugging the containers, security, C group, and complete entry point support and Docker environment variable support. Okay, we also have a new container runtime. Why is this required? Because uh, Yarn has a tight dependency on Docker daemon, so not all users want to install Docker daemon on all the node manager hosts. So maintaining a Docker registry is also could be a pain point. So kind of moving away from Docker with this alternative is, is beneficial for the Yarn ecosystem. Uh, and we can use HDFS uh, for distributing the images. It's It was a natural choice because HDFS was kind of yeah, tightly coupled with YARN in this sense. So uh, we can just replace Docker registry with HDFS. And uh, we have improved documentation for this run C support. So you can check if you want. YARN native services. Uh, what is YARN native services? So basically it's a framework that uh, provides first class support and APIs to host long running services natively in Yarn. This is it in a nutshell. Uh, it supports Docker and traditional containers. Uh, and uh, we also have application catalog built on top of native services, which uh, offers cross platform. I mean, a platform as a service instead of an infrastructure as a service uh, approach. Uh, and it reduces development costs for applications and it, it provides a lightweight approach to manage your applications. And uh, you can get your, as a personalized view of the software status of, of your Hadoop applications with this. Okay, let's see what's ahead of us. What is the future and the roadmap of Yarn? So uh, as we emphasize with Sunil, uh, supporting multi-cloud is, is very important nowadays. So we can't lag behind uh, the technology improvements. So uh, community efforts has been started to think and brainstorm about the following topics like uh, scaling recommendations or uh, cluster level scaling, like adding nodes or removing nodes more intelligently based on some metrics or node level uh, scaling as well, which can be considered as vertical scaling. Uh, yeah, the community also started to think about uh, smarter scheduling like bin packing. So you can pack the containers to one node instead of spreading them around uh, and account for speculative nodes like spot instances. So it's more like a dynamic, uh, dynamic scheduling. And uh, also downscaling nodes could be uh, and should be improved if, if we want to uh, be serious with the cloud setups. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, there are some usability improvements as well. So uh, we noticed as a community that it's sometimes very hard to troubleshoot applications, the distributed applications. So uh, there are some scenarios like where, when the applications are hanging or failing or there are some scheduler issues like application stuck and we don't know the reason. So uh, for this, uh, we we introduced the collector, the diagnostic collector, and uh, it is responsible for getting uh, several metrics for the applications uh, on an on-demand basis. So what we can collect, uh, logs or, or JSTAG data for the containers or resource manager, node manager logs for the containers on the on the specific time range. Uh, we can also check the scheduler config. We can also enable resource manager logging on a more verbose level, like debug, to check uh, uh, specified time frame for what's happening in the scheduler. So there are endless possibilities uh, to improve this. And we also have Yarn Log Processor, which is uh, which will be uh, open source soon. Uh, it's a tool. To, it's a CLI tool basically to parse yarn locks and it is capable of listing and filtering by certain properties and search for common errors like container executor failures or error codes or let's say AM preemption or getting some stack traces from the log. So it's a, it's a smart log analysis tool for yarn. 
Okay, resource over commitment. Uh, yeah, it's it's a long story, but still it's in the picture because uh, we can save some resources with this. So the, the main idea is that we have utilized resources uh, covered with red in the picture on the left side, and we have uh, uh, allocated but unutilized resources covered with uh, the, blue, the blue color. And uh, what if we want to utilize uh, from this allocated but unutilized space? So the idea is that we can allocate opportunistic containers from that range and then if the cluster becomes full afterwards then we can uh, preempt those containers before the normal containers that that are called guaranteed containers okay let's talk about uh, the upgrade really quickly uh, there are two types of upgrade uh, the express and this, stop the, this is a stop the world upgrade, uh, which means there is cluster downtime, but we, ha we don't have strict prerequisites for that. And uh, users can upgrade the masters and the workers in one go. Uh, compared to the rolling upgrade, which is preserving cluster operation, so downtime is not required, and, and the uh, service impact is minimal, but uh, can take longer and it uh, can be more risky. So for example, if you upgrade the major version upgrade we recommend uh, to choose the express upgrade because there are some technical challenges with rolling upgrades but uh, the community is actively uh, talking about this so a lot of work has been done it's a work in progress so uh, should be part of the release soon i mean uh, fixing or, or enhancing the rolling upgrades uh, yeah Okay, uh, I would like to give the word back to Sonia to conclude. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, so, taking us through the entire uh, State of the Union sessions. Right, so uh, in summary, like uh, what we want to say that a lot of enterprises are actually deployed a large scale clusters, right? So, uh, within the range of uh, some of them, uh, even federated up to 40 to 60K of nodes, uh, and, and maybe a single cluster go up to 20 to 25K of nodes. And there's a lot of uh, scale improvements that are happening, and a lot of enterprises are actually using. And um, and that's at the scalability level. At the adoption level, even if you look at Hadoop 3, a lot of enterprises in terms of what we talk to, they all move to Hadoop 3 and using it in production actively and running their workload. So uh, various companies have uh, shared their uh, stories and actually the blogs and et cetera, of how they have done it as a case study. So uh, it's great to see those things. And also looking at the upgrade story. So there's a lot of active discussions that are happening in the community at this point of time, where like how we are actually faring ever. So uh, in depth of upgrade and uh, some of the uh, some of them actually have done the rolling upgrade, including the, from Hadoop 2 to Hadoop 3. So it's great to see those things and it's coming in and getting merged to the uh, our releases. So uh, we will be pretty much in a very strong in terms of our great story with the rolling upgrade as well. So uh, if you are out there uh, in Hadoop 2, we recommend you to upgrade to 3 at this point of time. And um, there's a lot of case studies. So uh, reach out to us in the community so we can help you in whatsoever position uh, we can. So uh, let's go to the next slide where we want to summarize like quickly. Uh, just quickly just of it like uh, there is a website active releases line how our release plan look like and more than that we do have an active uh, bi-weekly um coming this thing up happening so there is a meeting link there uh in the slide so we can share to all of you guys so uh, we do recommend all of you guys to join the sessions and uh, share your uh, worried thoughts and uh, use cases so as a community we can uh, together discuss and brainstorm and get those things for you so uh that is pretty much it uh, from our side and again uh, before for uh, parting, I definitely would like to give a shout out to the uh, entire set of uh, Hadoop uh, uh, contributors out there who uh, made uh, this uh, set of features what you just saw, because these are all done by a couple of us, right? It's an entire community support and all of them actually contributed to source code and all the period of time. Uh, uh, and gave this uh, massive awesome feature set to, to Hadoop 3. So thanks to all of all of you guys and a big shout out uh, to the community here. And uh, that's pretty much it uh, from myself and Salat. Are you signing off? Any questions, I uh, will take it now. Thank you. I'm looking at the chat window, yeah.
So there is a question at uh, any plan to support AMD uh, ROC GPU. So uh, at this point of time, uh, we have done integrated with NVIDIA, but uh, as uh, Silad mentioned, uh, we have done a plugin model of uh, a strong uh, device plugin uh, framework on top of YARN. So if any new hardware device does need to be uh, merged to YARN, it becomes a simple uh, implementation of a uh, exposed uh, class. So uh, you just need to come with your jar and uh, put uh, just do the basic implementation, and there you go. Everything else behind the scenes, we take care of it. So at this point of time, what it matters is actually just to write a plugin for that particular AMD ROC, ROC GPUs, and it should ideally be working. Uh, but it is not uh, yet there. Uh, we definitely need some help from the community to do that. Uh, so there's another question from Pavel uh, Gate Session, uh, and uh, he's excited to see the improvements in the YARN and thing. Um, so there's a question that Claudia that told a uh, capacity schedule will be deprecated in C the six and advice to migrate to uh, uh, fair scheduler, right? So yes, that's correct. So um, uh, that's actually uh, the product level uh, discussion for that, but a lot of effort is gone to might uh, like uh, do the transition from pair scheduler to capacity scheduler in a seamless fashion and why we did so is basically that a lot of supports like no label no attributes and for the features are there in capacity scheduler and a lot of concentration when they have to improve the performance and that's the reason why uh, we just try to improve that much further and further so it becomes much more easier and so fs uh, users can actually easily migrate to the capacity scheduler and get the whole uh, new set of features and uh, use there in their day-to-day uh, -day deployment model so uh and there is also a very clear talk is going to happen uh, as mentioned by silar uh in that we'll be talking about fs to cs migration tool itself because it's an independent tool to migrate fs xml to capacity xml so that session should ideally give you a much more detailed one uh, so there's a question from brahma already uh, uh 20k cluster single node a single big cluster any bottlenecks or suggestions and can you highlight some points from this so this is basically we got a feedback from one, some of our community uh, partners and uh, they just shared that like uh, such an improvement was possible and they were able to run there's a challenge in terms of scale uh, definitely there uh, in terms they found bottlenecks in terms of no heartbeats and also there is tuning done in terms of passing scheduling to make it even more seamless and uh, a bunch of uh, effort went into that and most of them is contributed back to the uh, data source code so i believe that should be able to cover so uh i think uh, there's a question about cloud releases so maybe we'll not be able to answer that uh, because it's a public session so releases are pretty much uh, company oriented so so those are the questions at this point of time that i got it um, Uh, we'll just wait for another couple of more minutes uh, to see any more questions. So there's another question uh, from Rima uh, about uh, the scheduling improvements uh, for 20K. Uh, yes, uh, we just mentioned about only the yarn side of the changes and uh, improvements part. Yeah, I think there is some changes in HDFS. I'm not very sure about that side, like whether that particular enterprise used HDFS or not in that scenario, but uh, it was more about yarn and how yarn can be scaled. So yeah, it was not about uh, the storage side of the world. So the question is capacity scheduler recommended now. So uh, it's a, it's a choice basically when the uh, user level at right, which one you need to choose so uh, when we did compare between fs and cs and we just found some of the feature sets like no labels or attributes and uh, so those are very um, very useful for the customers to uh, try out in their uh, production environments and which matches to their expectation to f get much more final control on the resources so a uh, node label was not supported in active fair scheduler so that is also one of the reasons why many of the users uh, are actually preferred on CS and by looking at other aspects. So we try to bridge the gap now 
so that most of the fair schedule fairness boards is an etc can be supported in the capacity scheduler so we are trying to improve a lot in this uh, last one year to improve the capacity scheduler to have the fundamental concept of fair schedule and also beyond that uh, to improve the performance so yes uh, it is a good 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 option to try out capacity scheduler uh, definitely and on the meantime uh, just uh, see that like whether it matches your expectation if you are coming from a fair schedule world so uh, and if there are gaps, yeah, you're very much welcome to suggest to us the thoughts uh, by creating JIRAs or participating with us in the community, and uh, we can try to improve that. Yes. Okay, I think that was one of the last session. Sorry, last question. Uh, so that, uh, anything else uh, you want to share? Mm, no, I don't think so. So I will stop sharing right now. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. Yeah. Thank you all. I think almost our time is up, right? Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you, everyone. And uh, have a great day and have a great Apache account. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.